Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses and today we have a bike I was supposed to review three months ago but instead my KTM decided to attack me from behind and break me. So now we have it, let's roll the intro and get cracking. Zontis have seen great success with their road bikes, the 310 series, and of course the 125, the street bike, and the Urban Scrambler. And for a while they've banded about the idea of a large scooter. Well, they have it now. Here it is. I introduce to you the Zontis 310M scooter. This is a single cylinder, single overhead cam, 309cc liquid cooled engine, which uses a Bosch intelligent EFI system, which basically means if you give it a really difficult maths question, it will have the answer for you within five seconds, probably. It develops an impressive 33 brake horsepower and 23 and a half pounds foot of torque. It is said to do 74 miles to the gallon and apparently a top speed of around 90 miles an hour. You get 14 inch wheels front and back with a 110 front tyre and a 140 on the rear using CST rubber. Brakes are ABS with a 270mm disc on the front and a 270mm disc on the rear as well. Suspension uses chunky 41.5mm inner front forks with twin shocks on the rear. The tank holds a rather decent 12 litres and the dimensions are all very typical. Just over two meters long, 770 millimeters wide, 1.3 meters tall, and the seat height is just 760 millimeters. Now I'm five foot 10 and a half with a 31 and a half inch inside leg, and I am flat footed. It is quite wide, but not so it's uncomfortable at all. And I am flat footed sitting comfortably on the seat. But what I really do like is how light it feels. It doesn't feel heavy at all, and I can lean that over really easily. Now the wet weight is 168 kilos, so it's only about 35 kilos more than your average 125, and it doesn't feel very heavy at all. I like the proportion and the way it's balanced so far, but of course when we get out on the road, we'll see how it feels in the corners and on the streets. Obviously, because that's all you can do, corners and streets. The dash is the same as what you'd find on the Zontis T310 V2. So it's nice and clear and easy to use. You can adjust the different um, style, uh, what you see on the dash there. But uh, whilst we're riding, I shall show you that a little bit later. Um, it is Bluetooth compatible, so you can connect it with your phone. However, it's not available to use with your phone sat-nav. It doesn't display on the screen. I say that because I have been asked that question on more than one occasion. Looks-wise, I think it's very impressive, even with its surprised, slightly put-out transformer face. 
but I like that. It's quirky. I love the lines. I love the way it flows nicely. They're stark lines, but they all flow really well. It's a lovely looking machine, and I think they've done the design superbly. I like how you've got the uh, indicators up here, the DRLs on here, and I'll show you those in a minute, and then your lights uh, in there. That's just its mouth. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I, uh, the, I like the fact that you've got this screen like you have on the T310 that's uh, electronically adjustable. You've got an electronic fuel filler. You've got an electronic seat release. Um, it's, it's got the same features as the T310, the backlit controllers. But again, I'll show you that a little while later. Um, overall, I think the look is superb and the proportions and the size are just right. It's not small and it's not too big. It's like one of the three bears. It's just right. On the front here, you've got two cubby holes. This one is mechanically opened and this one is electronic. So you have to push the button and turn it on to be able to open it. In this one, you've got a double USB socket and enough room for ooh, a Capri Sun, perhaps a half bent twirl and a packet of crisps with the air still in them. And in this one, a packet of Skittles if you like Skittles, or other confectionery is also available, of course. Um, under here, you've got enough room for a full face helmet. The air box is a bit of a monster, and I'm not convinced that's all filter. However, on the other side, you do have rather a large exhaust, so side by side, it's quite equal as far as dimensions are concerned. It is vast. It's probably needed to counter the weight of that thing. Oh, and that is a stainless steel exhaust. So then, let's take a look at those lights. Well, you've got your uh, main lights there, your DRL, sorry, uh, and your main headlight that's on. Um, there's your main beam. Flash, flash, flash. And your indicators. And I do rather like the design of the lights at the back there. Even in direct sunlight, they are still very visible and very decent. And the indicators, of course, also nice and visible. Now, just heading back to the front for a second, I want to show you something. There's an array of differences. So when you unlock it, you've got that little one at the front come on, that. Um, when you start the bike um, with your lights on, this is the light you get. However, if you turn the lights off, you just have side lights, you get these little DRLs as well as that. I like that, that's cool. It's mean looking. So then onto the important bit. Let's take it out on the road and see what it rides like. Right, so here we go. Now, I have high expectations of this scooter because it's Zontis and I'm very impressed with the Zontis bikes. So let's see how this one goes, shall we? Initial thoughts? That frightened me. Harley up there. Thought it was coming behind me. So yes, initial thoughts. Um, it's not as big as you might think. Pull away. Very good. Oh yeah. That's got some decent pull away. Pretty impressed with that into the first corner, quite nice, dips in very well, turns in really well actually, have to be careful because this really picks up speed very quickly, a lot quicker than you think, brakes, the ABS is very good. Now the seat does feel a little bit hard. Um, but that's only when you've got your feet down. Once you're up, it does feel quite soft and forgiving, almost sort of a, I'm sure it's a gel seat. And it does feel pretty forgiving. It's very easy. The um, handlebars are quite close. And then I would want to sit back a little bit, I think. 
sort of push your bum into the seat a little bit. Dash is very easy to see, very clear. Screen adjusts thusly. We'll try that out on the dual carriageway, see what difference that makes. So at the moment, I've got it in eco mode, and when we get onto the dual carriageway, we'll do a, uh, a test between eco and sport to see if there's a difference in the way it picks up. Um, Speed-wise, it's very easy to uh, get quick speed from this throttle. You open it up. It's not always easy to keep it under 30. You get used to it. Just knowing how much to uh, twiddle the throttle very, 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 very gently. You have got different settings, so you can change the clock. Um, I don't know if you can do it on the fly. Good balance when I stop here, don't need to put my feet down. So see how quickly it sprints up to 40. Are you gonna, no, good. Yeah, <laughs> very easily. Effortless up to 40 miles an hour there. As I say, I mean, initially, I feel perhaps I'm quite close to the handlebars, but I'm getting used to that. If I push myself back on the seat, the edge of the seat is digging in me. Not Again, it's soft, so it's not as though it's a jolt in my back. That's better, actually. Pushing back into the edge of the seat. Feel a little bit more upright. Yeah, that's not bad. Switch gears are all very familiar. Just like the uh, 310. So yeah, all the settings and things like this, you cannot change anything on the clock once the uh, bike is moving. I'm looking forward to getting onto the carriageway and see how quickly it picks up. It does dip into the corners really easily, really tight. So easy to get up to 40 there. Mirrors. Good visibility out of the mirrors. I've got about, uh, I mean, I can adjust that a little bit more so I could undo that, move that round a little bit, which I think I would need to. And then I've got almost 100% visibility there. At the moment, I've got about 90%, uh, 85, 90%. I can see my arm a little bit, but I can still see very well behind me because you've got longer mirrors. It's very easy to ride. It's very comfortable. The suspension, front end, feels fine. It's quite uh, soft and forgiving. Back end, equally. It's not jittery in any way. At the moment, we'll go down the back roads and see if there's a difference there. All right, dual carriageway, eco mode first. So around we go here. See how quickly it picks up. Glides around the corners quite nicely. Here we go. Yeah, it definitely picks up quicker. It's not a huge difference, but you can definitely tell the difference. Nice 
nicely into the corner. Let's see what it's like down the back rows here. Yeah, it soaks up the bumps very easily. And it's nice and nippy out of the bumps as well. Eco mode makes any difference on the suspension. I don't know if it's a placebo effect or whether it does actually feel a little bit softer. Certainly very comfortable. Very simple indeed. Sort of wafting over the bumps. There's no jolts. Suspension is very forgiving, very nicely done. Oh, I like that. Well, brakes are ABS, and I'll wait till we get a straight bit. And oh, yes, <laughs> very sharp, very good. Yeah, this is quite a bumpy road, and I've got no jolts. It's a combination of the seat and the suspension giving me a very comfortable ride. The pickup, even in eco mode, is certainly enough. As I say, sport mode, you can hear it revs a bit more. It does seem a little bit quicker, but it's not a massive difference between eco and sport mode. But then again, it is only a 310. Sound-wise, I get no noises. I can barely hear the exhaust. There's no creaks. There's no knocks. Seems absolutely delightful. Right, perfect opportunity for a, a little weave test. Yeah. I say, it darts from side to side very easily. <sighs> Please turn right. Turn right, turn right, yes. Freedom! Oh, that's very pleasing. Takes the corners pretty well, even at speed. A nice soft loft machine. with this Let's get a bit of sport mode going oh actually you can tell there's a quick in the pickup a quick in the pickup that should be a thing oh yes loving that superb brakes superb brakes this should cut the engine no, oh yes it does. So, there you go. So, 
Time for a sum up, and what did I think of that? Well, it is quite blustery today, but I was very planted on the road. Wasn't blown around at all, to be honest, and I was very surprised and pleased by that. Um, the screen, you didn't see it on camera there, unfortunately, because I did it on the way back, but the screen does make a difference, but only after about 55, 60 miles an hour, and you can just feel it buffeting in a slightly different area. But it does work, and the screen is very good at deflecting the wind Anyway, like I say, it's blustery today and I didn't get blown around at all. So the screen, very good feature, I like that. Um, the overall look of the scooter I think is brilliant and it's surprising to be honest because you sit at the lights and people are expecting you on a scooter just to pull away gently and it just goes really pleased with how well it pulls away. Um, downsides. If anything, um, I felt a little bit close to the handlebars. I mean, it's obviously because I'm used to a motorbike, so I'm stretching quite a lot more. Um, but once I push myself back in the seat, and it is a nice soft gel seat, so you can do that. Um, I didn't notice any issues at all. Other than that, um, it dips into the corners very nicely. I don't get any worries about um, it flaking me across the road into the oncoming traffic, although, you can be mistaken for going a little bit too fast and over egging the corner if you're not careful. So just be mindful of that. It is a scooter, not a sports bike. And you do tend to ride it quite nippily. Nippily? That's not a word, it should be. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything negative to say. The brakes are superb. They pull up fantastically. Um, the dash, very easy to see, very clear. Uh, no problems with that. Um, if you want to see the features on the dash, just pop along to my um, V2 version of the T310 video and you can see I go through the features on the dash on there. It's the same as that. Now, I actually am going to talk you through the um, dash, but uh, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, on the handlebar here, you have got the button here for the screen and it does move about two inches. Look. So it's quite a decent amount. You've got buttons on here as well for the set and mod, and that is for the dash here. So set goes through the options. Um, you've got uh, tire pressure monitors on there. Um, mod is to go up and down. And set, again, is to select that option. Um, so yeah, tire pressure monitors in there, which is quite handy. Um, what else have we got? Oh, we've got uh, different clocks. Oh. That's the only thing, remembering which button to push. <laughs> okay, so down, there we go. So you can change these. Um, we'll go down to the next one, quite like that. Uh, uh, you do have to go through it again to get to the next one. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, simple, well, there you go, what can I say? People do like simple. Uh, what else we've got? Clock, brightness, unit miles per hour, kilometers per hour, that's very simple to change. Uh, Bluetooth on or off, uh, which we said before, you can connect your phone to it, but you cannot um, connect a sat nav from your phone to display on the screen. And information, just in case there's any faults or anything comes up. So I really do like that, very nice. Uh, switch gears, very easy to use, nice and clean, very positive. And for those of you who want to see the fuel cap release, it's this button on the switch gear here. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Ta da! Isn't that amazing? And like with all the modern Zontis in the range, it's the fit and finish and the quality of the products used that is also equally as impressive as the way the bike rides. Um, under here, you've got nothing. So don't try and pull that because it will break. It's just a cover, all right? It doesn't open anything to some secret nut in the handlebars. Well, there is a secret nut in the handlebars that undoes the handlebars, but you know what I mean. Um, so, yes, uh, the, again, the, the quality of the way things are refined is just very good quality. It uses expensiveness, and that's what I like a lot about Zontis. They've really upped their game in the quality, the fit and finish, and the way things are made and put together. Nothing creaks, nothing is old. Nothing is overused. Uh, it's just very, very well done. And uh, I cannot express enough how impressed I am. I also like how this is nice and flush, but it's actually, 
a rear footrest and that looks pretty sturdy under there is a proper chunky uh, footrest hanger um, but if you push it in it'll come straight out again it's one of those light touch ones like so very nice I like that that's lovely uh, the eco sport mode little bit of difference but not a massive amount but you do feel it pull a little bit sharper and a little bit quicker in sports mode nice and quiet when you're riding very forgiving suspension and I can't really pick up on any negatives I want to say about it um, color options that's the only negative thing um, I would prefer better color options than matte blue or black which are the only two options I think perhaps a red would have been nice and possibly there is a red in its future um, there is in Asia uh, but not in the UK at the moment so color options I think should be better um, other than that I don't really have anything else I need to say about it um, competition well there is competition um, again it's not a maxi maxi scooter and it's not a normal scooter it's a good midi size scooter uh, the proportions of the weight as well I want to add superb it really does feel like maneuvering it around really really easy in fact I'm now going to show you going around the yard so you can see just how easy it is um, in this confined space now pre-worn I will be dressed as I am now not with a helmet however it's my own choice and it's in the yard. So please, no comments about that. Cheers. So as I said before, please do not complain that I'm not dressed appropriately. I'm in the yard, I'm doing this, it's my own risk, so deal with it. So all I'm gonna do is a little figure of eight and a turning round so you can see how it handles at low speed, uh, maneuverability wise. Um, I'm on my GoPro and the wide angle's on so you can get a nice good view so I don't go out of shot. Um, it might look further away than it is, but it isn't. I mean at the moment, from what you're seeing, I am two metres away from the camera. Right, here we go. Well that was easy. Very easy. Let's do a figure of eight. Oh, the maneuverability is effortless. Absolutely simple. So then, it's competition. Well, you have got the Yamaha X Max 300. However, that is £6,000 plus on the road costs. Um, you've got the Honda Forza 350. But again, that's £5,200 plus on the road costs. Or perhaps you've got the Sim Joymax 300Z Plus, but that is 5,300 plus on the road costs. Which brings me nice and neatly onto the price of this. Well, this Zontis 310M is £4,599 on the road with a two year parts and labour warranty. And I think that is an amazing price. Very, very good scooter for a very good price. And I'm not just saying that, I really do think it is brilliant. And Zontis have done it again. They've kept up with the reputation of their other 310 series, and hopefully now they're 350, and we'll have more on that in very soon future videos. And um, yeah, there you go. The 310M scooter from Zontis. Now servicing, um, the first service is a thousand kilometers which is 625 miles. Um, and then every 3,000 after that, I do believe. Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize. Don't take me on that. Um, I think it's every 3,000 or two. But anyway, it's still a pretty good deal indeed. And I think it's very impressive. And that brings me to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masters. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next time with something else. I don't know what, surprise, find out later. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Cheers.